So we're completing the KHP titration. We're doing a weak acid strong base titration. And we're using 25 milliliters KHP, which is titrated with 0.05 molar calcium hydroxide. We're going to find an anionic reaction. We're going to graphically identify the max buffering position, which I, what I call, which is really the half equivalence point, the equivalence point. We're going to verify these five points, initial pH, pH at the equivalence point. Okay, the pH value is somewhere between max buffering and the equivalence at 20 milliliter. Okay, and of course, um, pH at the equivalence point and the final pH, as long with, along the way, figuring out the Ka of the acid, which is not acetic acid, it's the KHP, and determine the concentration of the weak acid. And of course, identify an appropriate pH indicator. So let's be crazy and get started and go in order. Okay, so when we look at this curve, and I have one of the students' curves up here, we want to verify the points. Okay, so the first thing that I do is I'm going to look at the most important point is the equivalence point. And so looking at a curve, the first thing that I do when I look at a curve is identify the equivalence point. I can see that there's an asymptotic line here, and the middle of that looks to me approximately to be about there. Okay, and that's my equivalence point. Okay, and I'm going to call this point four. And that's important, that's the equivalence. That's, the, that's what I think is about the middle of the asymptote. And again, it's, it's pretty, um, it's, a, it's, a, it's, a, it's a little rough guess, it could be a little higher, but I'm gonna say that volume, because what gets me really good here, what I get a piece of information, I get a real piece is I know, although it's on a straight line, I'm about 26 milliliters. Okay, that's really important. 26 milliliters. And that tells me something, okay? That at 26 milliliters, I added what? Enough base or enough hydroxide, okay, that now equals the protons. That's important, okay? And from the equivalence point, I can find the half equivalence point. And again, if I added enough, and again, you really need to understand where you are here. So let's st take a step back, okay? and understand what we're doing. Because the, the math isn't all that difficult, but understanding what you do. So what we have in this titration is what we have is we have a beaker, and in that beaker we have the weak acid, which is the KHP. Okay, and then we're gonna have a burette, emptying device. And that emptying device is gonna drop the base, which is the calcium hydroxide, the 0.05 molar calcium hydroxide. Really important that you know that there. Okay, now, how much base do we need? Well, we're going to keep dropping the base until it drives the reaction. Okay, so we're trying to titrate and figure out something about KHP. And of course, along the way, we get this curve here. Now, in port, in point four, okay, which is the equivalence point, Okay, as I just said, very important point. The OH minus that I'm adding here is now equal to the H pluses. That's important and imperative that you get there. We've added, that's the point where we've added just enough base from the burette here to neutralize all of this acid. So, if I know it took 26 milliliters, graphically speaking, if I look at my graph here, okay, and I have a graph up here, and I'll draw another one. I have something like this, woo, asymptote. I know that the middle of my asymptote here is that 0.4, and that's where I have the hydroxide equal to H plus. Can't say enough. Now, if I know that to be 26 milliliters, you can guess to halfway titrate this acid, okay, it would be, for me, 13. And that's an important point as well as we go through this. And that's an important point we're going to stop. That's going to be point two. Okay. Now, I'll mark it here on this, but I want to take some time to understand. So 13 milliliters, okay, so this would be 10, 12, so I guess 13 is about right here. Okay, that's point two. All right, this is point one that we have to verify as well. Now, before we continue, after we look at our graph and identify the equivalence point, its volume, and its half equivalence point at 13 milliliters, I need to go over three important reactions that are occurring in this, 
in this lab, okay? And it's really important that you understand these important reactions because knowing what reaction you're working with will really help you identify what we have to do at, the, at these different points, okay? So the first one is the major player is the actual net ion reaction. So I said I had KHP, okay, KH, and this is C3, it's an organic acid, C8H5O5, and I'm reacting with calcium hydroxide. I'm going to stop here, although I'm reacting this, I know a couple of things. I know that this is a strong base. Group 1 ions, or group 2 ions in this case, is going to completely dissociate. Now calcium hydroxide has to be dilute, we're going to assume it completely dissociates. This is going to produce hydroxides. It's going to produce calcium ions as well. However, party people, this calcium ion, like a group 1 ion, doesn't ionize water. It's going to spectate, so I'm not going to include it. Now also, this potassium is going to dissociate and leave me this weak acid, HC8H5O5. And it's negative because the K plus comes off, and it doesn't ionize water also. Okay, group 1 ions, group 2 ions, and some of the halogens do that. Now, this is going to be a driven reaction. I draw an arrow. This is not equilibrium. This is stoichiometry. This is my titration reaction. Important. This is the driving reaction because this weak acid does not like to give up that H. Think about it. This big organic acid is negative 1. This H plus is not really going to come off something that's negative 1 unless it's forced to, and that's what the strong base is going to do. The strong base with its three lone pairs of electrons and being negative is going to track this and pull this proton off. And what we're going to make, of course, we're going to make water, which is a poor electrolyte, that's why I write it together, and we're going to make the conjugate base, which is C8H5O5, and it's negative 2. Notice it's negative 1 here, negative 1, negative 2 on the reactant side, negative 2 on the product side. Now notice, I kept the weak acid together because it doesn't dissociate very well. Those that are weak acids. The strong base I write as the hydroxide because the calcium is going to spectate and the potassium is going to spectate. And notice the water I write together. And I know water breaks apart, but water I write together because it's terrible at dissociating. How do I know that? It's Ka is 1 times 10 to negative 12. So this is important to recognize that this is a very important part of the uh, titration. And where does it occur? It occurs almost from the starting position right up to the equivalence point. All that is your titration. Okay? After that, okay, we have equilibrium, equilibrium positions occurring. So this is important. When we're adding base to the acid right here, when we drop this base to the acid, force the weak acid to become a conjugate base by um, the OH minus, that's a driven reaction. Now, there are two other times in this titration where we're going to have equilibrium problems. The first is point one. At this point here, initial pH, what do we have? Well, we have an acid, like, okay, H, C8, H5, O5, negative, sitting in water. This will be equilibrium because it's going to go forward somewhat and go back. It's going to reach equilibrium pretty quickly. This acid does not like to dissociate, so it's going to give off an H+. And it's going to make water become H3O+, at least a little bit, right? And it's going to produce some conjugate base, which is C8H5O5, and that's negative 2. Okay? So that is equilibrium. And to know how much it goes forward, okay, we're going to need its, what, Ka to tell us. Now, there's another position on here, just to write it to make sure. At point, this is point four now, the equivalence point, to know its pH is to know what happens when I have driven this reaction completely to the conjugate base. So... The third place, or the third reaction you have to have, is when you're going to have a 100% conjugate base. Remember, this is your conjugate base. This is your conjugate acid. When you drive the reaction completely, no matter what moles you have, all of this will become all of this. 
So at this point right here, at point four, you're going to have 100% of the conjugate base. At this point here, you have 0% conjugate base, as you have 100% of the acid. Right? Very important. As you drive the reaction through the titration by adding the strong base and driving it, you're lowering the amount of acid and increasing the base, conjugate base, until you have all of it. All right? So what is that reaction? So at the equivalence point, there's going to be a moment in time when you have 100% conjugate base. Let's write it. CH85, O5, negative 2 is going to be sitting in water. And what's it going to do? It's going to be equilibrium, but this negative 2 is going to pull H's, okay, and make hydroxide. Hey, that's going to raise the pH at equivalence, and that's why a weak acid always produces a little bit stronger conjugate base that's going to make your equivalence pH be above 7. And of course, you're going to reform the acid, or the KHP, or at least this part of the acid. All right, H, C8, H5. O5. So this reaction is going to occur at the equivalence, okay, this sitting in water, okay, is right here, which is the first. And of course, as we're adding hydroxides, this first reaction, the net ion, is what's happening. Okay. All right, cool beans. So where are we here? Okay, so we have our equivalence point. Most important point with the graph. Go find half equivalence. That's 13. All right, now I haven't verified a couple of things here. Well, I haven't verified my initial pH. So people like to start order, so let's try. To verify the initial pH, because it's a weak acid, we're gonna need what? We're gonna need what? We're gonna need a Ka. Think about this, it's a weak acid. So we have, I'm gonna just draw it this way to make things simpler. We have HA, breaking apart into the H plus and the what? The conjugate base, A negative. Now, I know it's negative 2, but we're just drawing it like this. So what's happening? Well, if it sits in water, okay, what's going to happen is the HA plus the water is going to be in equilibrium. And this will donate some. Make H3O plus, which we know is synonymous, synonymous with H plus, and make what? The conjugate base. All right? So but how much of that? Okay, how much of that? Well, that, my friends, is an equilibrium problem. Okay, and what do we need to know for the equilibrium problem? And these problems are going to look very similar. So let's go over that. What does it look like? Well, we're using what reaction? The one sitting in water. Okay, that's the beaker. So if we use this, make some room for ourselves, what do we know? Well, we're going to need some initial concentration. These guys are zero. We always start these reactions or these equilibriums pushed over to the left, right? Okay. And this is going to be minus x. This will be plus x, plus x. And you know there will be x at equilibrium. And this will be whatever this concentration is, minus x. Well, we've been through this a lot, haven't we? And what do we know? The Ka is going to equal x squared over whatever this concentration is minus x. But guess what? Because this is going to be such a small number because the Ka is small for weak acids compared to this, this approximates away. So we've been seeing this. Now if you need to do this, where am I getting this from? Ka is what? Products over reactants, coefficients become exponents, solids and liquids do not apply. So it's this times this, these are both x's, over this concentration. That's what this is. And you solve for the x, which is H3O+. Plus. We have a problem here, Houston. We don't have the Ka, we don't have the concentration. So to do number one, the first point, we're going to have to get those two values. Let's go get them. Let's go get the concentration. So right here, let's do it. Okay, what do we know? There's 0.05 molar calcium hydroxide. Now what do I know about this? This is dibasic. So this produces two hydroxides. So this is really 0.1 molar, okay? hydroxide ions, because for every one of this formula, there's two hydroxides, so really it's about the hydroxide at equivalence point. So what do I have? Well, I know that the concentration is 0.1 molar. How much did I add at equivalence? That's the key. From the graph, from the graph, people, it's 26 milliliters. That's what I'm getting. That's important. That's a first starting position. We found it took 26 milliliters of this base. 
Let's go find how many moles of hydroxide. That'll tell us moles of H+, plus, which is in the beaker, and we get a concentration. So what do I know? I always take my molarity, which in this case is 0.1, times it by my volume, that's 26 milliliters. That's what I added. I don't care what was in the beaker. That's exactly this. It's 0.026, and that's liters. I'm going to times that together. What do I get? I get 0 0.0026 moles. Moles of what? Moles of who? Moles of hydroxide. All right? Now, that moles of hydroxide is equal to what? It's equal to the moles of the acid. Hey, it's equal to the moles of H+. That's what's so special about equivalence. So we have 0 0.0026 moles of H+. Let's go find its concentration. This is key. I'm trying to find a concentration. Molarity, moles over liters. I've got my moles of H+. It's equal to the moles of base additives. What's so special about that? What volume do I use? Do I use 26? No. What's in the beaker? We're trying to we found exactly how much base I had to add, at least hydroxides, to match up. Every hydroxide matches with H+. So this tells me that that's exactly how much I needed to add. And timesing that volume in liters, molarity, I have the moles of the base added. It has to equal the moles of H+. So party people, what we need here is the volume in the beaker. You must know what you're doing. Okay, we're doing initial concentration. So we divide by what's in the beaker. In the beaker, there's 25 milliliters or 0 0.0, what? 0.25 liters. Do the math and you get 0 0.104 molar. And that's my initial concentration. And that's one of the things I'm asking you to do here. What's the concentration? Okay, we do titrations to figure something out of an unknown. And that's one of the things we have. We have a concentration. But now that we have that, woo, we've got this, 0.104. Great, but I need my Ka. Well, what do we know, party people? We know that when the what? At the half equivalence point, I'm driving this home, at the half equivalence point, what do we know? There is 50% conjugate base and 50% conjugate acid. That's important. Here there's a what? 0% of the acid, 100% of the base. Here there's a what? 100% of the acid, 0% of the base. That's important because when we do henderson hasselbloch okay, we learn from a derivation that pH is equal to the what? pKa of the acid plus the log of the conjugate base, okay, over the what? The conjugate acid. If these values are the same, that'll be a log of one. And now, I know some people say, I got it, move on. But I have to make sure everyone has it. Okay, if you look at the titration formula. Okay, where is that? Okay, right here. Let's do some stoichiometry. You only do stoichiometry with this formula. Only. Okay? Why? Because this is a driven reaction. There's no equilibrium. Molarities are needed for these. So if I have, how many moles, okay, do I have? We found that there's 0.0626 moles of hydroxides. Hello, 0 0.0026 moles. How much of this? Well, it's the same, right? We added just enough base, right? And so what's going to happen is this is going to be minus 0 0.0026. This is going to be minus 0 0.0026. They both go to zero, of course. This becomes plus 0 0.0026. Since we're starting at zero, this is totally driven. And that's what it would be if you're at what point? <laughs> this point. But we want to be at this point, so I wasted your time. Sorry. Okay. So if we want to get to that point, okay, we want to half titrate it. So what this would be, sorry, at half titration, I got ahead of myself, is that if I half titrate it, this would be what? Minus point, okay, this would be um, point zero. Let's do this. We have this point zero zero two six moles, sorry, Christmas in July. And here, I'd have point zero zero one three moles. I'd be adding half as much, correct? And if I do that, this would wipe away what? All of this, 0 0.0013, that'd go to zero, it's limiting reagent. 
This would be minus 0 0.0013. And what's the difference? 0 0.0013. Okay? And this would be plus 0 0.0013. The point I'm trying to make, I probably made it good in class, is that I'm going to have equal amounts. If I half titrated at this position here, okay, I added half the amount of moles needed to drive this forward, okay, I'm going to have equal amounts of conjugate. Half of the acid now became the base, and half of the acid is now gone. These numbers are the same. And if these numbers are the same, and you dealt with pH equals the what? pKa plus the log of what? These two numbers that are the same, the log of 1 will go to 0, and the pH equals the pKa. So, Let's go find that pH equals the pK. Sorry for those that knew that, my bad, okay? But there's someone out there. So, taking the graph, okay, and looking, and I'm just going to say going across, this pH is 5. pH is 5. pH equals the pKa at this position, right? So what do I know? My pH is 5. And if my pH is 5, looking for my black marker, okay, but my pH is 5, then what is my pKa? Of course 5 at that position. And what do I need is I want the actual Ka. So if my pH equals pKa is 5, I want to convert this to a Ka. Remember, pKa is the negative log. It's an exponent, so I want to make this what? Well, I go 10 to the negative 5. 10 to the negative x gives me the number. So 1 times 10 to the negative 5 is equal to the Ka, okay? I don't need any math for that one, but if I had something like 4.9, I'd do 10 to negative 4.9, okay? So I found my Ka, and now for any people, I can now do what? I can now solve for the initial pH. I have both things. So going down here, okay, and I'll clean this up. Let's solve for this. And again, you, uh, you probably don't need to do this table anymore, but I'm just purist, make sure we got this. So we have 10 to the negative 5 equals x squared over 0.104 minus x. So that is my formula. So I take my 10 to the negative 5 and that's second function EE and I times it by 0.104 and I would times that uh, I'm sorry, now I'm going to get the square root because now I multiplied these two numbers together. And now we're going to solve for x and do the square root of that. And what I get is my x is equal to 0 0.001. And what is that part, people? What is that? I solve for this x, right? Now, it could be the conjugate base concentration, but this is what I'm after, because this gives me my pH. So if that's my concentration, that's equal to my concentration of my hydronium. How do I get my pH? Well, pH is what? Negative log. Negative log of that number is 1 times 10 negative 3, or uh, I'm sorry, the, the negative, I'm sorry, it's equal to 3. So the pH is equal to a 3 there, sorry. So they go from the actual concentration to the pH. And so, although it's not perfect, okay, we should have had a pH of 3. So we're a little off here, but that's okay. A lot of different reasons for that. All right, but we should have been around, around 3 based upon the known the Ka there. All right, so we have verified that. We have verified this point. We have, this is important, we have the what? We have the, the milliliters, but we haven't verified this pH. Now, this pH looks to be about, let's see, this 5, 6, 7, 8, I don't know, 8.4-ish, 8.3-ish. I'm guessing here I'm on the board. So 8.4 looks like that pH there. So let's verify that. And this is probably the most work you have to do. And a lot going on in this step, so please pay attention for this step here. All right. Where are we here? We're trying to verify 0.4's pH. And what's happening here? At this point, we have driven the reaction completely. 
and that's the one I was trying to do before I got crazy. So let's get rid of this. So here, okay, this is the titration curve, or the titration reaction, the driven reaction. Okay, so in the half equivalence point, we drove it halfway. In complete dri driven reaction, we have what? Now, you probably don't need this, but what we find out, there are 0 0.0026 moles. Moles, not molarity. This reaction here, I use complete moles. This is a stoic table. I do not do molarities here. This is a driven reaction. As much of this will drive this. Now, I also know there's 0.0026. I already did this, but hey, I'm tall. And this was zero. This is a liquid we don't care. And guess what? We're going to lose this. I know we don't have to do this, and some of you guys see it, but I want to make sure. We're going to lose this. At the end, we have zero because we drove it away. And of course, this is plus what? 0 0.0026. You had none to begin with, so you start. It's basically a 0 0.00026 what? Moles of conjugate base. We drove that forward. So as much acid as we have is exactly how much conjugate base we now have as we drove the reaction completely to completion at point 0.4, the equivalence point. We want to find the pH here. Well, this is sitting in what? Sitting in water. That's our third, equal, or our third reaction, or second equilibrium. So what do I have? I have it sitting in water. And there it is, right there. Now, it's sitting in water, and as I said before, it's a negative, it's a conjugate base, so it's going to what? Rip um, H's away and create some hydroxides. So how much hydroxides it creates depends upon what the final pH is. This is weak acid, strong base. So our pH at equivalence will be above 7. Why? Because the conjugate base that we create by driving the reaction forward has some ability to ionize water to create some extra hydroxides. And that's why we're above 7. That's an indicator that this is weak acid, strong base titration. Our equivalence point is above 7. Okay? So let's continue. Now, the question is, this has to be equilibrium. Unlike what we just did above, which was a stoic table, this is equilibrium. We need not moles, we need concentration in equilibrium because equilibrium is based on somewhat K constant equal to the products of reactants, coefficients become exponents, solids and liquids do not apply to some stoichiometric coefficients. So these are concentrations. So we need a concentration. What do I have? I have my moles. So let's create a, a concentration. All right, well, we know 0 0.0026 moles. The question is, what's the volume? Remember, molarity is moles over liter. Careful, careful, careful. Where are we in this point? We are at this titration here. We're at this point, the equivalence point. And how much did we add? We added 26 milliliters already into a beaker that has 25. So at this point, the beaker where the pH probe is has 51 milliliters. So to know the concentration at that point in the beaker, I'm going to divide by 51 milliliters. Now, of course, I have to be in liters. So 0 0.051. And here we go. So 0 0.0026, 0 0.0026, divide by 0 0.051. And... I get a concentration to be 0 0.051. That's my molarity, okay? But I needed this value here, which I got from understanding the stoichiometry at the what? At the equivalence point. A lot going on, I get it. Let's do the equilibrium. Do we really have to? Okay, no. We should know that it's going to be an equilibrium constant is equal to x squared. This is the x, this is the x, all over the concentration, 0.051, minus x, but we get rid of that x because of what? Approximation. This number is so much bigger compared to that x. This is x squared. The problem is this has to be Kb. This is a base reaction. This is not the same. You cannot use Ka here. The second reaction, 
which is basically the reaction sitting in the beaker, is the acid becoming uh, dissociating. Here we have the base creating hydroxides. And what do we know? We know that Ka times Kb equals Kw. Solve for the Kb. Kb is equal to 10 to the negative 14. It's a number you have to know. Divide by the Ka, which we already found at the half equivalence point, okay, that point was 10 to the negative 5. All right? So you do that math, okay, and you get negative 14 minus a minus 5, right? If you do exponents, you're subtracting them. So negative 14 minus a minus 5, you plus plus, and of course what you get is a KB, okay? If I'm not mistaken, that's 9, right? Yeah, I can do this. 9 plus 5. Yeah. So it's going to be, KB is 1 times 10 to the negative 9. That's my KB. All right? And so, plug that in right here. Changing colors because I can. So 10 to the negative 9 is my KB. This is my equilibrium problem. Do I really need to do this again? It's the same gosh darn thing, but you have to recognize that it's a base reaction. So therefore, base reactions, I need a KB, which is the inverse of the KA, when you think about it, uh, in terms of its ability to uh, become a base. All right? That's a derivation I did a while ago to show you that. Okay, so let's do 0 0.051 times second function 10 to the 9. And what I get is I get uh, 0.051 times 10 to the negative 9, and now I'm going to square it both sides. Sounds like you've been doing this a million times. We have second answer. And what I get is my x to equal 7.14 times 10 to the negative 6. Now, what did I solve for? I solved for one of the x's, which is what? Either the hydroxide or here. Both of these were x's, right? I'm after the hydroxide. It's the same number. So that's the concentration. Know what you're doing. You just solve for the concentration at equilibrium, okay, of the hydroxide. So what do we do with that? We're going to do a negative log, right? Negative log to make it into a pOH. Why? Because when I subtract that by 14, I get a pH. Okay, so I like to do that. So I do negative log, second answer here, and subtract from 14. Okay, I get a, PO, uh, uh, a POH, and then I subtract that, or 14 minus the POH, and that gives me approximately 8.9-ish. And that's my pH at equivalence. Okay? And I got 8.4, again, rough estimate. Was I really in the middle? Maybe the middle point's a little higher, but it's pretty darn close, a good enough estimate. So I estimated 0.4, I got 0.4 done, I got two, I got one done, right? Okay, so these, there's, these, these points are done. So 0.1 is done, 0.2 is done, 0.4, I, I determined its pH, and it's graphically its volume, now I want to go find point 0.5. 5, 4, 2, and 1. And 5 is pretty simple, so let's go there. Okay. Anytime you're looking for a final pH, what you're looking for is what? The extra amount of the titrant. What did we do? What did we do in this lab? We found you're adding what? This base to this acid. At this point here, they're equal. So at this point, from this point right here, we've got what? Extra. Read all about it. Extra. Let's get rid of this. Extra hydroxides. So what you do to your graph is see how much hydroxides that I have beyond the equivalence point. So I'm looking at my graph here that we have here. I'm at 26 milliliters. So from this point on, we ended this titration at 50, 
So I've got 24 milliliters of what? 24 milliliters of hydroxides or a base that I added, okay? Now, what do I do with that? Well, let's get rid of this stuff that's in the way. If it wants to go away. Okay, so I have 24 milliliters. Now, what do we know? We know that we were delivering 0.1 what? Molar hydroxides, right? And I added how much? 24 moles. Let's get the moles. Let's find the moles of the extra base added beyond this point. So I take the concentration of my hydroxide. That was calcium hydroxide was 0.05, but because there's two hydroxides, the real concentration of my hydroxide is 0.1. We kind of dealt with that. We're going to do molarity times the what? Liters, 0.024. And what do we have? We're going to have 0.0024 point, hey, point zero, zero, moles of what? Hydroxide. I want the final pH. Okay? So I take my moles. I need a concentration of my hydroxide, right? Because once I'm going to concentrate my hydroxide, I can get my pOH and then subtract from 14. Booyah, done. So I'm going to divide by some liters to get concentration of my hydroxide. The question is, do I divide it by 24? No! We want the concentration at the end. What were we doing? We've been adding base into this beaker. It started out with 25, and we added what? 50. So we have 75 what? Milliliters. So 0 0.075. Let's go find that value. So 0 0.0024 divided by 0 0.075. And that gives me 0 0.032. 0 0.032 what? Molar. And that's the concentration of the hydroxide, right? Get rid of that. That's equal to the concentration of the hydroxide. Great. So what are we going to do with that? Negative log. Let's get the pOH. So negative log. And I get like 1.49. I subtract that from 14. Well, 14 minus that. And so I get a pH after negative logging that. I get a pH to be... 12.5. Again, what I did was I negative logged it to get my pOH. And once I have my pOH, I do 14 minus my pOH. And that gave me 12.5. And where am I? This is 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. And I got 12.5-ish is what I should have. I'm a little under. But, you know, that's a good approximation. Okay? And so we have point four done. Right there. I mean 0.5, the final pH, just the extra. I figured out how much extra. I divided by the total volume in my beaker, the 50 of the base plus the 24 in the beaker. So 24 or 25? 25 in the beaker. Okay. Found the concentration of my hydroxide like I've done before. Negative logged it. Subtract from 14. I've got my final pH at 12.5, which is approximately what we got, which is cool. Okay. We have one last point, and I said to do this at a particular point. I think I said at 20, so I believe my 20 is right here. We want to approximate 0.3. It's pH. Now, we know I'm getting a pH about 5.5-ish right here. Let's see, how do we do that? Okay, so let's just do it here because I'm having fun. How do I figure this out? Okay, well, there's a couple ways to do it. I want to show you the easiest. Okay, you notice something, we are below equivalence. Notice something, we're in this area. This area is a driven reaction. What is that reaction? That reaction, okay, is this right here. This is the titration. We want to figure out what the pH is here. Okay, now. The first thing is that at 20 milliliters, the question is, how far forward are we? Okay, how much H3O plus would I have? I'm going to make some conjugate base here. So we know is 20 milliliters a base has been added. That's my starting point. So watch what I do here. Boy, it should look a lot similar to what we're doing. Take the 20 milliliters, 
Convert it to liters, 0 0.020 liters. Times it by what? The concentration. Been through this, haven't we? 0.1. Why am I doing this? It's going to give me moles of base added, which is 0 0.002, right? Moles of base. Or in this case, moles of hydroxide. You with me? I hope so. You here. Now, how much acid did I add? Well, from our work, and it's from our work, we had a 0 0.0026. Okay. So think about this. We added 0 0.0020, and now we have 0 0.0026, or at least that's what we had in the beaker. Okay. Let me set this up because I know I may confuse you. I may get toll on you. All right. So let's just get rid of this right here. This is where we completely drive it. Remember, where are we, people? We're in a stoic table. We're in this titration formula. Okay, so what do we know? If I add 20 milliliters of 0.1 molar, I'm adding 0 0.0020 moles. I know from work I've done already that in the beaker, there's 0 0.0026. I know that right here. We figured that out. So that's something that's a known already. So let's write that in blue before I get blue. 0 0.0026. Uh, okay, this is a zero here. Who is the limiting reagent? Da-da, this. So it's minus 0 0.0020. This goes to zero. This is minus 0 0.0020. And we subtract it. We got left 0 0.0006. And guess what? This is minus 0 0.002. This is what? Plus 0 0.0020 plus zero. <laughs> right here, it's the amount of what? Conjugate base is here. So I know a lot of stuff going on here. Okay, so this is how much acid's remaining. Why? Because I added a lot of base, not enough to get the equivalents, but I still, but enough to get most of it gone with the exception of a little bit. And whatever I took away is exactly the base I made. We've had this conversation. So interesting enough, okay, let's go back to the board because I'm getting bored. Okay, what do I know? Well, I know that this is 0 0.06. That's my conjugate what? That's my conjugate acid. This is my conjugate base. I have a buffer, guys. I have a conjugate acid base pair. And I can use the henderson hasselbloch equation to the rescue here. pH is equal to pKa plus the log of the conjugate what? Conjugate base over the conjugate acid. Now, I know the pKa. It's 5. Why? Because we found it to be 5. Hey, all right? So let's put it there, 5. Now, what's the conjugate base that we made? 0 0.002. We wiped away 0 0.002, but then for every one of these, we make the same amount. So 0 0.002. That goes here. So 0 0.00, I'm sorry, that goes here. Conjugate base. 0 0.0020, right? Whatever. And of course, the acid is 0 0.0006. 0 0.0006. I'm putting it right into the henderson hasselbloch Why do I do that? Because anytime I'm in what part of this curve? Anytime I'm in this part of the curve to know what my pH is, I'm dealing with some conjugate base amount and some conjugate acid amount if I'm starting with a what? Weak acid here. So it's really helpful. I could do an equilibrium problem, but I'm going to stay with this. So let's go find that value here. Of course, the calculator doesn't work. So we take 0 0.002. We're almost done. We can get done quicker if I had some calculators that worked. Wow, they both went dead. My crowd is going away. So stay with me, party people. So what we got is 0 0.002. Divide by 0 0.0006, I get 3.33. That's what this is, right? 
this is 3.33, but I'm going to take a log of that, 3.333, right? Take the log of that. The log of that And this becomes, this entire expression right here becomes plus 0.52. So 0 0.002 divided by 0 0.0006, that's my conjugate acid. And notice I used moles, and it's a really important point here. Why do I use moles? Because if I use molarity in here, the volumes for both of these are going to be the same. Watch this for a second, really cool. Molarity is equal to what? It's equal to mole per liter, all over mole per what? Liter. If you know anything about simplifying, these liters would cancel, so I can put the moles of these in here. In any case, the log of that's 0.52. I add it to 5, and hey, what do I get? My pH, when I have a little bit more base than acid, is going to be above the halfway equivalence, of course. And I get 5.52. And I said about 5.5, so hey, we verified it, and that's all four points. If you can do all of that, you're terrific, and you're tall, maybe. The point is we have one more piece, and that's to do what? Determine what an appropriate indicator would be. Now, to figure out the indicator, we have to understand is where indicators are also acid-base reactions. And when we titrate, if we were to use an indicator, would be titrating the indicator as well. Okay? Now, let me show you what I talk about. So, if I ask you to pick an appropriate indicator, if we were to use one, instead of using pH probes, a couple of pieces of information I want you to realize. When we use pH probes, we're using an equivalence point. We know exactly the volume when the hydroxides equal the protons. If we wanted to use an indicator, we would get an endpoint. That is not equivalence. Okay? Endpoints is going to approximate this volume. But what we can do is if we have an indicator that turns color in this region and tells us to stop, will that volume at that position be markedly different than what we get? And the question is no. If this line is truly asymptotic, the, PA, the, the, the volume at the base that we need to add is going to be very similar to this spot. These two spots are essentially insignificant. But we have to make sure that the indicator changes color where? At that position. So I want to talk about that for a second, okay? And I kind of want to blank the screen out here to talk about that and finish this up. I know you want to be done, but you have to understand this, okay? So what are chemical indicators, okay? Chemical indicators are also acids. You can use phenolphthalein, bromothymol blue, but we do this. Here's the H. Here's the I for the indicator. They're also acids, and they're weak acids. So they'll give off their proton, and they'll become a conjugate base that's negative. What's clear or different about them is that they're going to have a different color as a conjugate acid than they have as a conjugate base because of changes of their structure and their double bonds Okay, that change. It doesn't really matter. We've covered that exclusively, actually. So what do we know? Well, these guys must have, guess what, a Ka. And so, party people, when are we going to see a marketed color change? So if this is litmus, the, the acid is the red color, and the base is a blue color. So when, when, when am I going to see a color in between? Well, wouldn't that make sense to you? I'm going to see a color in between when there's 50% of the acid remaining and 50% of the base remaining. Hey, pH equals what? pKa. Okay? So, party people, if we were to look at this, uh, uh, a titration of an indicator, it's a weak acid, right? So it starts low. Well, not as low as an acid. Bloons up. Acid token comes up. Where is the color change going to be? Well, we're probably going to see a color change where? Where there's, when you go from... When you have more conjugate base than conjugate acid, then it's going to be more what? Blue here. When you have more conjugate acid than conjugate base over here, it's more red. So the color change is probably going to change occur at the pH that equals its what? pKa. 
as long as that pKa, okay, as long as this point occurs on the asymptote, you've got the right indicator. Now the rule is, use the, use the pKa of the indicator, remember it's an acid, and have it be plus or minus one the equivalent. So our equivalence is about 8.7-ish, uh, or, or I forgot what we actually calculated, 8.9. Let's go look at a list and see which would be an appropriate indicator that's close enough to this what? To this uh, asymptote, or uh, to the equivalence point, to not significantly change the volume. So uh, here we go. So I have this list here, and I don't know if you can see it, okay, but my 8.9-ish equivalence point, plus or minus 1, 8.9, uh, 9.9, phenylphthalein would work good, okay, 8.9, 7.9. So the best indicator that's plus or minus one would be phenylphthalein. You can make a case for bromothelma blue, but I think 9.4, okay, you're still in this area. Remember, 9.4, you're still here, and of course, if it's 8.7 or 9, okay, that's 7.9. 7.1 might be tricky, right? You might be in this area where you're not in an asymptote and the volume is markedly different. So the best indicator where the pKa of this acid-base indicator, it's an acid-base itself, is closest to the indicator, to the equivalence point, so that you are approximating the equivalence point. If you use an indicator, you would keep adding the base until the phenylphthalein just slightly turns pink. And when is that going to happen? That's going to happen when the indicator, which you're also titrating, does what? Okay, let's get rid of this, and I'm done. The indicator, okay, this is the big finale. Here we go, right. So the indicator does this, okay? When I titrate the indicator, this is a high K, right? It's gonna do this. Right, it's at the halfway part right there. That's where it's pH equals pKa. So when you are titrating, that's also going on, okay? So bottom line, pick a pKa because these are acid bases and you want their what? PKAs, which is a half equivalence point, that'll tell me where that color change occurs. All right? So I hope that helped. And if you can do, the, understand these points, you can do it in the reverse now. Okay?